Welcome to Free Media Free Minds. Free Media Free Minds is a program that explores media freedom, diversity, and access to information. My name is Pumez Amitagazi. And I'm Healthy Jansen Daubia. This is part two of our show where we talk about community media, where we talk about media ownership and control. In this show, we're going to talk exclusively about community ownership and control. We ask, is, the communi is community media in control of its television and radio stations? Joining us in studio is Tashrik Truebody of Radio 786. Welcome, Tashrik. Thank you. And next to him is station manager at Cape Town TV and my boss, Karen Thorne. Welcome, Karen. <laughs> and we welcome back Zenzi Lekhoisan, who is a journalist and a veteran editor. Welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome to you at home again. If you've, if you've just joined us, this is part two of our show where we talk community ownership and control, where we talk media ownership and control. But before we talk, we're going to take a look at a clip produced by Bush Radio called The Partial Eclipse, which takes us back to the dark days of apartheid when community, when community media was just becoming a reality. Radio started preparing to go on air from about June 1992. I remember there was a partial eclipse of the sun that time. As a community access radio station, the people, the direction and the content came from the communities and organizations of Greater Cape Town. Our trainee producers, or networkers as we call them, came from a wide cross-section of people as well. We had to apply for a license to go on air, but given the old apartheid radio laws, we didn't even think it would be easy. Final preparations for going on air included tweaking the transmitter and the aerials a bit so that we could get a perfect sound out of them. We had a microwave link from Bush Radio to the main transmitter, which was set up down the road on the roof of Industrial House, which is owned by one of the trade unions. At last, the great day dawned. Bush Radio networkers, staff, trustees, friends, volunteers, and even some of their children converged on the studio for our first broadcast. I can say I feel ready, and um, I think the time that we've all been waiting for, and the time that we've been working. We've, at least we've worked so hard to get to this point. And uh, this, yeah, we are ready to go on air. We are ready. I'm really excited. Yeah. I mean, after two years of talking, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm very excited. So, what can happen simply is that we can just leave an instruction with the security that if the police insist on getting into the building, they call us here and we can coordinate everything from here. Okay. 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 All right? Happy. Yeah. Okay. All one wants to say to you, enjoy it, make the best of it, it's the first time there will be problems, but forget about that, do best what you can inside. It's four o'clock and this is Bush Radio. I'm a guy. 
حرف آلوه تنبو You're watching Free Media Free Minds. There was a clip um, produced by Bush Radio called Partial Eclipse. We've indeed come a long way since those days, Karen. But tell us, we're sitting at Cape Town Television Studios, a community, a community TV station. Um, our crew comes from the community. What is the state of community media ownership and control in South Africa? I think we've come an incredibly long way. I mean, I was an anti-apartheid activist myself and was around in those dark days and I think historically print media played more of a role in the struggle because at that stage we didn't have access to the airwaves um, but since the advent of democracy an, an enormous amount of work has been done to democratize um, the airwaves and in fact we're looking at I think I heard the other day that there's about 198 community radio stations that have been licensed all over the country and uh, there are six in fact there's seven licensed community TV stations of which five of them are currently on air so we've seen a tremendous um, diversification of um, broadcasting in particular, both in the community radio and television space. Mm -hmm. I think print, I mean, I'm, I'm not in a, in, a, in a position to talk about the state of, of print, and um, perhaps my, my colleague can do that. But I, I certainly think that we've made huge gains. I want to ask, thank you for that, Karen. Indeed, we have made new, um, large gains. And Tashrik, you would know, because you work at Radio 786, a community-owned radio station, about the legislation that empowers this ownership. Why is it important that communities own the media? Well, I think it's central to the job that we're doing because uh, the fact of the matter is we're sitting, I think, with a medium that is as personal as it is. And the fact that we're a community media radio station, it even makes it more special because, in, this, in effect, what we are sitting with is a situation that... Uh, as soon as the story breaks, as soon as something is happening, we can go to air as, as, as it is happening. And I think once we start curtailing the control in terms of the community and having their voices heard, whatever the topic may be, um, then I think it becomes problematic. But I think, again, coming back to how personal medium this is, and uh, yeah, I think that, that that is central to the story that we're trying to tell. You, you know, Professor, uh, Tashrik is now talking about the personal nature of these stories, but in our show last week, we spoke about the agendas, mm -hmm. um, about creating the perception of what takes precedence in the news. Mm -hmm. um, Zenzile, is this the reality in your experience, veteran journalists in both print and in electronic and, and radio? Um, are communities able to really put their stories forward or is there another agenda that they have to adapt to? Well, it, it, it concerns the narrative and it concerns the terrain. Those are the two things. Who controls the terrain? When, I talk, when we talk about the, the media space, the space where you have an articulation of ideas inside a public space, I would uh, suggest that community media, this phenomenon known as community media, either in radio, in print, or now recently in television, I, I would suggest that it controls a very small part of the actual terrain. Because if you look at uh, if you do an audit of the uh, visual or audio space, you'll find that community media is largely driven to the margins. Mm -hmm. In New York City, where I worked many years ago, I worked at the station called WBAI. And WBAI was part of the Pacifica network. Now, WBAI was located right in the center of New York's FM dial, 99.5 FM. So if you turned your dial one way, or another way, you're bound to end up with WBAI. In that space, we were able to intervene. What has happened is that there has been a diversification because of legislation. But essentially, you have a problem because the resources that are required for this big community voice to be heard are not available. So while on the one hand, Caesar gives us something, it takes away the very basis of that voice. And why do I say that? I say that we are being disempowered because in order for this massive space, these communities, when we talk about the communities, we are talking about the majority of the 50 million people who constitute 
South Africa. In order for that voice to be heard, in order for that audio or that visual or that print uh, 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 narrative to be articulated, you require proper resources and there yeah. is not enough now, resources. Senator, please, please, sorry Even. to cut you off. Before we go to an ad break, I have a question for Karen to just to think about throughout the ad break. Um, we have four television, community television stations on air right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's a TV, Cape Town TV being part of it, a Bay TV and mm -hmm. the KZN1. Mm -hmm. So who controls them? How, who controls their programming? Mm -hmm. I'd like you to think about that while we take a short break. You're tuned in to Free Media Free Minds. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If, if you've just joined us, you're watching Free Media, Free Minds. We're talking about community and media ownership and control. We were station manager of Cape Town TV, Karen Thorpe. Thank you so much for joining us again, Karen. Before the break, we spoke about the ownership and control of the television stations, which is fairly new because radio has a long history, as we saw in the clip. Can you talk us through the, the issues of control and ownership, um, maybe in your experience, but also generally? I think the situation with television has been very challenging um, and I'd like to come back to the point made earlier about access to resources. Obviously television is more expensive than community radio um, and I, I completely agree with the statement earlier that community um, broadcasters are set up in a particularly television in a very disabling environment. The community radio stations have enjoyed tremendous amount of support from donors, from government. I think they've ploughed millions and millions of rands into the community radio sector and we haven't seen that kind of support for community Why television. I maintain that there's been a lack of political will for community television in South Africa, but I think that's now changing because we ain't going nowhere. And I think they're realizing that and they're realizing that they, they better actually get behind the sector. Does television have real power, community television? Oh, absolutely. It has tremendous power. And I think that's possibly one of the reasons why there's been a, a sort of a reticence to issue licenses. I mean, we've been waiting at the back of the queue for 18 years since the promulgation of the IBA Act to see community television come about. Karen, I want to be a little bit of a devil's advocate. Thanks for that. Mm. But we, our producers have, 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 have told us that um, despite the legislation, and you, you're alluding that it's been a long struggle for, te for television to gain a foothold, mm. but it would seem that um, some of the television stations, in terms of their programming and their production, are being taken over by commercial. Exactly. And if I can mention Urban Brew, who now takes over the programming and the, and the production of some mm. of the other television stations. So look, what I mean, makes Cape Town TV different? I, I think essentially what, what happened is that a lot of these community groups were given licenses, community television licenses, and they didn't have resources to basically set up and run these TV stations on their own. And what happened that, is that that forced a lot of them to, or however it happened, they went into partnerships with commercial companies who then provided the studios, the money, the equipment, the human resources and everything. And in the process, they entered into management agreements that eroded the community ownership and control of those stations. And essentially, Urban Brew, who essentially runs Bay TV, 1KZN and Soweto, essentially ran those stations. There were boards, um, and, and, and the boards uh, do exercise some control um, of programming and such like. Um, and yeah, the other, the other station is Chwane, um, they were entered into a management agreement with Zallywood, so it's not limited only to Urban Brew. And Cape Town TV is in fact the only remaining community television station that has managed to 
retain its independence and has not entered into commercial partnerships. But we've paid the price because we've had to go it alone and we've been chronically under-resourced and at times our very existence has been under threat. But, but Karin, despite the challenges that you described for Cape Town TV, you have managed to maintain editorial independence. Absolutely. So Tashrik, can, maybe you can come in here from a radio perspective. We've, we've now um, agreed that there are tremendous challenges, there are resource um, weaknesses for both television and I'm assuming despite the millions for radio. But does, um, how are you able to maintain your editorial freedom? Because I'm sure, and we've spoken about this previously with carrots being dangled. Yeah. Editorial freedom which in a sense translates into ownership and control. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of challenges. So let me first say that, uh, I, and I agree with, with, uh, with Karin, which says that we, yes, radio stations have enjoyed, uh, whether it be funding from local donors, whether it be from uh, advertisers, even sometimes government. But I think there's huge challenges, even for a station like Radio 786, that has to worry about, uh, you know, it's uh, payslip at the end of the month. But I think in terms of media control and also independence of uh, our editorial, I think there's been attempts in terms of legislation to try and control that. At one stage, uh, just about after 2005, there was an incident where there was a proposal that uh, municipalities uh, govern community stations, particularly radio stations. Mm -hmm. And that was problematic, and we, in fact, uh, fought back against it with filed submissions because at the end of the day, then, if you have a municipality run by a particular, uh, particular political party, there's issues of corruption, all of those things, then, uh, you know, mm -hmm. with funding comes in certain imposition mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, whether it be editorial or even control. So I think in terms of, uh, but over the past couple of years, I, I do agree that you know there's been challenges, but in terms of editorial control, we've been in charge of that, and mm -hmm. I don't think there's much threat where that is concerned. But my greater concern, though, is that as much as perhaps community radio or even commercial radio, while we have the editorial freedom, we're not touching on real issues of transformation. We're not mm -hmm. touching on content. Yeah. Now, Zenzile, as a veteran, um, why is it important to to, oh, to have um, community-owned media? Well, the issue is fundamentally about who controls what people think, how they engage, and how they act. In order to, to act in your own interest, in order to have agency, that's what it's called, it's called, in order to have agency, you need to have a well-informed populace. One of the things that if you do a cursory review, an audit across the spectrum of the South African print, media, and even digital terrain, you'll find that there are certain points of view that gets out. Now, uh, and, and, and let me follow that through. You find that uh, the terrain is being controlled uh, in a certain perspective, like the major policy of this country is a neoliberal economic policy, which entails a whole range of things, including privatization of services and so forth. When this, the, this matter becomes articulated in the terrain, everything seems to flow in the line that builds consensus for its right for that project. Zinzile, you, but, uh, uh, Zinzile, let me ask yes. you this. You, as we've alluded earlier, a veteran of 30 years, and despite the long history that radio and growing influence of television, community television and community radio has, are they, have they been able to make this dent in people's consciousness? People are conscious because people, Bob Marley says, who feels it, knows it. Most of the people who are con consumers of media are not as the media wants them to be three years old. How, they are how, not, they're how not dumb done. How is that translating? Because you, 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 in, our, in, our, in last week's show, you also quoted Bob Marley, you feel, feels it, knows it. But I want to know, is that consciousness which you say people have, is it being translated into action? Well, this particular space, this, is where, the, this is where the radio and, for instance, the work of uh, Radio 786 and the work of Cape Town Television is very critical because they're helping to coalesce these wakened pockets of consciousness and these pockets of discontent. This is across the spectrum. These things that are not what people are feeling, when I talk about what people are feeling, it's the daily slog to just make a living. We are, most people know that we are living 
this democracy that we seem to be part of has created perilous conditions. We had a bludgeoning of millions of jobs since the dawn of this democracy. But this is not articulated. What effect has that had? Now, in community media, you find those voices that are locked off of the major uh, uh, controlling terrain, what I call the mainstream. In that terrain, in this rough and gritty world, Cape Town Television and, and, and Radio 76 and all the other community media are able to bring in these voices of discontent. And they're putting more information into the bowl. The ultimate objective of having community control is the community gains control when its voice becomes resonant with where yeah. they live. And that is the objective. Okay, so Zinzuri, we're going to come back to that and I want to... Yes, I think there's a level of consciousness with regards to whether it be uh, socioeconomic issues or simply just, you know, uh, personal transformation issues. But I think also there's great challenges in not trying to, uh, you know, push a perception down people's throats or our narrative down people's, uh, you know, throats and impose on it. But I think, for example, there's... But, sorry, sorry Tashik, let me ask you, isn't it also, don't you also have a responsibility to create that balance where you don't impose the narrative, but you also try to change the way people may see the world? How do you create that balance? Well, I think that, that that's the difficult part because we might, the fact that you're a community radio station, you have diverse views and diverse opinions coming forward. I mean, there's two big issues that we grapple with uh, is one, particularly of racism. The fact that we still sit within our community where there are people that are quite racist against uh, a, a particular sect. For example, one day we picked up an issue, in fact, with Mr. Khoisan about, uh, you know, the, the Khoisan culture and where people, the fact that people need this land. Mm. And you see had this us and them sort of view coming forward. We have international stuff, international stories, different views on the take on, for example, the conflict in Syria. So uh, I think while you know you enter into the terrain and you enter into that particular uh, space where there's a difficult discussion that needs to be had, we still sit with a situation where we need to have greater influence around people's perceptions and people's thinking. Karin, a little bit of the same question, but I want, uh, if you can give us an example of the programming that is beginning to change the perception. And interestingly, we've alluded that Cape Town TV is one of the few independent televisions, community television stations. How, how is your governance structure helping to begin to shape an, an alternate view? I think those two issues are intrinsically linked. I mean, I think what sets community media apart from mainstream media is community access and participation. And that happens on two levels. First of all, at a governance level, CTV is in fact a membership-based organization, which means that any NGO, non-profit organization in Cape Town can become members of CTV. And so we have a whole range of organizations from unions to uh, sports organizations, arts and culture organizations, youth organizations, and various organizations working in social justice or civic structures. And essentially, they um, attend the annual general meeting, which, by the way, is taking place on the 30th of November, so we hope everyone's coming. And they elect the board of CTV. And ultimately, it's the station, the people who run the station, I report to the board. So we are, through that structure, directly accountable to the Cape Town community. And this board has input on the kind of programming. Well, we have different mechanisms to discuss. A board is predominantly responsible for governance. Mm. So, you know, they look at fiduciary issues. They are the highest decision-making body in between annual general meetings. We have other meetings like programming committee meetings where we uh, engage with different sectors in our community. This year, we did a, a qualitative and quantitative audience research project where we had focus group discussions with women and people in various communities around programming. We had a separate meeting where we met with all the independent producers because they also contribute content to CTV. So there's different ways that one can engage with your community, especially in a footprint like ours where you have three million people. It's difficult to have a town hall meeting and have a meaningful engagement that way. Then on the level of programming, I think this program is a very good example of community access and participation in content, where we decided with the producer, Mark Weinberg, um, to set up a collective of media activists, people who were interested in media transformation issues, to come together and basically create a program that they can 
participate mm. in, express themselves through, and we also encourage a lot of other organizations that are active in the space, such as Radio 786 and others, to participate in the program. But do you think, sorry, no, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. but do you think that community and media is, 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 is making good programs? Like in terms of reaching out to the people, to the communities and... Look, I, I think that we've got a long way to go. I mean, we, 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 we need to do more community-driven content. We need to be more accessible. So I wouldn't rest on our laurels by any means at this stage. But I do think you've got to define what you mean by good. Because mm -hmm. community media is as much about the process as it is about the product itself. You know, sure, we might not have all the best technology and the best production value and the greatest quality programs. A lot of our equipment is not broadcast quality and it's, you know, but ultimately it's the process that went into the making of this program that is equally important as the product itself. People were empowered, they were trained, they got to participate, we work with non-professionals. And the feedback that we get from our viewers is that they like that kind of programming because it's real, it's authentic, it's a space for true or authentic voices to come through as opposed to this overly constructed and non-authentic and formulaic approach that mainstream media takes. I think Zinzile Karan describes what seems to be a really exciting process to be part of. It's the process of, the, of, of, of developing the content um, and it's also reaching out to people. But Zinzile, there are definite threats to the kind of independence that both Tashrik and Karen described. Talk us through that. Well, the, the most important threat currently that the country faces is the, the secrecy bill, uh, which, if it's taken to its logical conclusion, will constrict your ability to do holistic stories that tell the full story. Because your ability to probe down, to find the information, and to give it ventilation is going to be restricted by legislation. But the most important thing to me, the most exciting thing to me, is that when you have uh, an understanding that these airwaves or this print terrain is a precious terrain, and you involve people who are outside of this mainstream, who want to find ventilation to what is going on inside of them, and you empower them, then you create a mechanism through which those people can find critical mass. They coalesce with other people. They find that the media that they consume reflects accurately or more accurately what they live. So you don't live in a contrived environment. And that's the powerful thing about community media. And then when you talk about control, when a community takes control of its media or media in general, it just means that they become active, they have more information, and they are on the move. Whether it's in, in radio, in television, or in print, they have their voice heard. Community media, its ownership and control, still remains the responsibility of us, you and I, consumers of media. And I can say with, with, with honesty, and I speak for Pumeza and our crew, that Cape Town Television is truly at the forefront of leading the independence of the media and with people like Tashrik and Zenzile, I don't think we can go wrong. Mm -hmm. no, you've been watching Cape Town, oh, you've been watching Cape Town TV. Yes, you have been watching Cape Town TV. <laughs> <laughs> you've also been watching Free Minds, Free Media. I'm Haldi Hansen Taubia. And I'm Pumazan Tegazi. Till we see you next time on Free Media, Free Minds. I have studied the idea of the human